to the experienced brown trout angler. Locating brown trout in a variety of habitats and water types is rhythmical and predictable. While a bold statement, the experienced brown trout hunter looks for soft flowing, shallow edges of water that have good oxygen with great escape cover. One such location found in many freestone streams is the shallow undercut bank, usually two thirds the way through the length of the run. This location is popular with deceptively large brown trout. The obvious feature that draws big browns here is the overhead cover that the cut bank provides. This is important in sheltering from overhead predation. Equally important is the scoured pocket of deeper water that exists in these locations. The faster broken rock water nearby or leading in from upstream is vital as it ensures there is ample oxygen mixed in, which is important in ensuring this remains prime habitat even through the peak of summer drought. Another important factor is the broken water itself. The choppy broken surface of the stream ensures that if water levels drop too low at the peak of summer, the big brown only has to move laterally from the undercut to reside in the deeper slot of the riffle to remain safe from overhead predation. At drought levels, the oxygen levels mid-riffle are the highest available at the peak of summer. While the water looks skinny and empty, food availability and net energy is high. There's almost no flow to fight, so energy expense is low. Any ingestion is energy positive. And in this location, there's ample food. Aquatic insects hatching in the current will drift or get blown laterally, or the brown will search and hunt. The grassy banks are simply factories for terrestrials, and every night mice and microtine will dare to be swept into the water. That's a lot of calories for a fish that's doing less than you would while sitting in your lazy boy. Now that we know why that brown has taken up residence, let's have a look at feeding it our fly. Keep in mind a brown trout's lateral line as we've discussed earlier in this series. This is shallow, calmer edge water and browns can detect disturbance up to 30 feet away. And they can see quite well. At the same time, these are the waters that need our best cast. Accuracy and delicacy are paramount. You need to position so you have the most control of your cast as well as leaving the best line control once your cast lays out. As you move into that prime casting location, move slowly. Keep a low profile with bent knees and plant your feet. Predetermine your casting distance and strip enough line to shoot. Keep your false cast anywhere near that fish to a minimum, if at all. It's preferable to false cast away from the fish and when ready, change your trajectory to your desired casting line, come back to a loaded false cast and place the line straight to a soft landing to lead the fish. Don't try to go straight at the fish, rather aim a foot off the bank and maybe two feet upstream. A longer leader of 12 to 15 feet is a good idea. So too a smaller, lighter dry fly like a size 16 Adams or a caddis with a short six inch dropper. That fish could just as easily spook and bolt for deeper broken water as it could slide out and eat your fly.